I did it. Welcome to the Silver Lining. Today we're talking about all the things I had to do, endure, the mistakes I made, the things I wish I would have known better in my first triathlon and half Ironman. So here we go. Let's get to it. Our journey begins on Thursday. Good old Thursday. My bike's boxed. The Uber's on time. The Uber also happened to be driving a Tesla because in California, but I'm not complaining. So yeah, we're good. Arrive to the airport, security, I pass security. I check in my bike. That was 75 bucks with Southwest. The journey begins from California over to my home state of Texas. We arrive, it's nighttime. I stay with my future mother-in-law, all good. Sleep well. Phase one, complete. Okay, it's Friday morning. I'm feeling pumped. My friend arrives, picks me up. We head down to Galveston. Awesome, we find a great Airbnb next to the beach. Look at this beach view. It could be worse, life is good. But since we're still on taper down mode, we end up going for a warm up run one day before. Here we go. So after the run, priority two is getting that bike set up. So I open my bike. It's chaos, I forgot to mark things, mistakes have been made, so I spend the rest of the day trying to essentially adjust the bike to the same position that my bike fitter got me fixed at. Since I've got stupid detachable aero bars, I'm literally there sitting, riding around in circles around the parking lot, trying to figure out like, oh, is this, is this, is this right? Is this, does my back hurt? Is my back gonna hurt after this? It ended up hurting, but it's okay. We got it fixed. So next day, T minus one day, Saturday morning, check-in morning, uh, bike drop-off morning. What do we do? We show up, we pick up our check-in envelope, which has a bunch of stickers that go on the bike, uh, the helmet, They you go through an orientation where they kind of give you all the details of how the race is gonna work. And we mount our bike. There was a lot of lot of fancy bikes, so it was pretty cool to see. And some people spend a lot of money. There's some like fourteen thousand dollar bikes in there. It's insane. It, it's an expensive hobby. I think like anything else, if you go down the rabbit hole far enough, you can spend some some dough, some money, some moolah, some bada for those Turkish folks. Anyway, as the day progresses, we're setting up our nutrition. Uh, we kind of had a similar idea, but. We, we were specifically setting out a nutrition plan for, okay, run. Or I'm gonna consume X amount of package of gels every mile. Uh, we were setting up our garments, paying out every like 300 calories burned. Uh, we were setting up our water bottles and stuff. And then we just noticed we don't have a race belt. A race belt for this that uses pins to attach. So get a race belt. So why do you want a race belt or a running nutrition belt? It, essentially, the you don't want to be having to pin your bib number on your tri suit directly. So you want to be able to just finish your your swim and slip that thing on without having to spend time pinning anything. So that that sucked. That's something that I did not see in any video, and I wish I would have known. Luckily, we ended up going to a local academy and we got the last two. So. Good to go there. All right, race morning, race morning. Danny, Danny, Will, 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 race morning. <laughs> okay, we're T minus 15 minutes in. We start headed over to, towards the swim, which is a one mile walk. And we essentially have to stand up by our estimated uh, swim time, which is called a rolling start. Um, and totally worth it. it just avoids a horde of people entering the water so essentially there's a massive line there's people the, the fastest swimmers go first right and then the slowest swimmers go in the back make it up to the dock it's my turn and the nerves the nerves hit in as soon as i jump in that water i, I think that was the hardest part of the race the first two minutes of me jumping into that water and entering panic mode the water's cold I'm panicking, I swallow water, but then I, I get into a certain pace and it, it, I calm down, I lower that heart rate and it's just, you get, you get into that groove. Just, 
However, swimming with a bunch of people, you're, you're not going to be ready to get kicked, slapped, uh, tracking. That's something I had no idea. So I swam a lot more than I should have. I swam way the hell out there. There was a, a kayaker that had to go and catch me and like poosh, hit me with the, the paddle uh, to make me look up. I'm like, I looked over and it's like, oh shit, I'm like way off course. So there we go again. So tracking, that, that was... That was painful. So anyway, I get done with the swim. I show up to the bike and this, this is something that sucked in the chaos of the morning of my friend missing a helmet. I forgot about my water bottles, not having any water. Essentially what happened, I dropped off the bike at check-in with my bike bottles in there. And in my mind, I was like, oh, there has to be a water station tomorrow morning. So no water station to be found, or if there, if, if there was one, it was way out there and we got there late. So I had no time. So the first 15 or 14 miles of the bike ride, I, I've got no water. Um, that, that sucked. That, that sucked, but it was okay. The second hardest part of the whole race was the brick, specifically mile seven. Uh, it, it, it's tied between mile seven and maybe the first like one mile that, that just after that 56 mile bike ride, your legs are jelly. So as soon as you step, it's just, whoa. So if your body's not trained, if you haven't done any brick runs, I recommend it. Um, one of my friends, Will, he is a very, very good cyclist, very good cyclist, but he did not, he did, he made the mistake of not training brick runs. So as soon as he got to like mile two, he just cramped bad, which will happen to a lot of people. For me, it's particularly mile seven. Oh, mile seven. How painful was mile seven? Uh, I cramped, I cramped everywhere. I, I had to stop and cramped, Every, everything shook. I, luckily, I was very, I was near a water station and they had pickle juice. And I promise you that saved my life. That allowed me to continue at the slug snail pace, but I still continued. I get done with the race. I finish. I am an Iron Man. Uh, half an Iron Man, at least. Iron Man light, you could say. But it took six hours, 13 minutes to finish the race. With, I think, my bike was, to me, it felt like the better uh, practice out of the three. I passed a ton of people. The run, hard. Swim, I swam way too much and not hard enough, I think. But I made it, I passed, I, I'm running through that finish line, got my little medal. What do we do afterwards? <laughs> what do you do after an Ironman? You pig out. So we ended up going to this restaurant. You can see here, Will is jealous of what my other friend ordered. Otherwise, it was great. It was fun. It was an awesome experience. Here's the aftermath. My feet were just destroyed. I, at the recovery stations, I was drenching myself with water and ice. That humidity is not something that, you, like, damn, <laughs> that humidity is bad. It, it is so humid out in Houston or Galveston, Texas. And it was a good weather day too. The weather was 75. So I keep, like high heat, high humidity, terrible. Um, lost a lot of water, but yeah, here's some of the aftermath, sunburns all over the body. I mean, you can look, look at this, look at that. That's pretty bad. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. But I made it through. I made it through. Ah, ah, ah. <laughs> but yeah, thanks for watching. Uh, on the next video, I'm going to basically show you what is next for me, or it's gonna be a comparison of why the hell I'm still at 25% body fat. 20 pounds lighter, but 25% body fat. Anyway, thanks for watching, catch you in the next one.